This is Twit. We have to talk about Venom. Now, Steve, Venom has made the rounds this week. It was announced early in the week, and uh, it's been a doom and gloom prediction. It was a way to yeah. break out of a VM and perhaps move laterally and cause a lot of mayhem. But what is it exactly? What is Venom? Well, mostly it's a good name. <laughs> um, yes. And this is the problem. If it was just some, you know, uh, uh, vulnerability number, 32649, everyone would go, huh, what? But you give these things a good name, like Heartbleed or Shell Shock, and it gets a lot more traction. So, okay, so, and in fact, in some stories, it's been called, Venom has been called worse than Heartbleed. Um, none of that, I think, really withstands much scrutiny. Um, both Heartbleed and Shell Shock were remote trans-internet <clears throat> exploits that were something to worry about. This is a concern probably for enterprise users who may not have control over the processes that are running inside their virtual machine. So let me explain what's going on. Um, when, you, when you have a, a normal computer, it's got hardware devices. It's got, you know, uh, LAN adapters, it's got USB controllers, it, it's got, you know, hardware. And legacy systems have a floppy disk controller. So when you move to virtual machines where, where you're going to have multiple instances of an operating system running each in its own virtual machine, each of those operating systems it must be led to believe that it's actually talking to the hardware, just like it would be if it were actually running on, not in a virtual machine, but in a real machine. So the operating system th thinks it sees the LAN adapter, the USB controller, and, for example, a floppy disk controller. It actually thinks it sees the hardware. The way that illusion is created is with a virtual floppy disk controller, which pretends to be the hardware. It intercepts the operating system's access to the hardware virtually and, and emulates its function. So it turns out that 11 years ago, the, the so-called quick emulator, uh, QMU, had uh, an implementation of a virtual floppy disk controller that was flawed. And for the last 11 years, nobody picked up on it. And in fact, um, uh, derivations of QMU, specifically KVM, Zen, and VirtualBox, all inherited this problem that had gone unseen. Other virtual um, machine systems, for example, VMware, Microsoft's Hyper-V, and Box wrote their own code from scratch. So they're not part of this problem. But, but those that were descendants of QMU who were using the, uh, that original 11-year-old floppy disk controller virtualization code, it turns out there's a problem. There, what was discovered was a way for a process running with admin or root privileges to issue some commands to the floppy disk controller, which have not been disclosed. There are specifically two commands out of many that, that can be issued, which breaks the emulator of the floppy disk controller hardware in such a way that the, that code can break out of the virtual machine containment. Essentially, the idea is that when an OS is in a virtual machine, it's, there may be other virtual machines in the same physical machine, but they can't see each other. You assume they're going to be isolated, but, but this is in, in the, in sort of in the same way that uh, with a normal computer, you, um, some, some code running in a process might be able to break into the kernel. It might be able to break out of its process space. This is like that, but this is sort of up a level where you're able to break out of the virtual machine container and then potentially access the contents of other virtual machines 
breaking that that explicit privacy guarantee. But that's potentially right because this is essentially a buffer overruns, and you're you're yes. going to be writing arbitrary code hoping it gets executed. But most more likely than not, you're just going to end up crashing some of the VMs. Oh yeah, there'll be a, there'll be a lot of crashing going on. Now these all all these things start off with crashing. We it, it's important to say the vulnerability was found. It was responsibly disclosed. The 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 people who it was disclosed to didn't believe it at first, and and, and the guy that that found it had to like pain, painstakingly walk them through a demonstration and make it happen. And then they said. Oh, <laughs> so, so the good, so we don't have exploits in the wild. As far as we know, this has never been weaponized. It's a vulnerability. And, and the good news of all of this press is that everybody who's, who this affects will patch it. I mean, it's probably already done. Right. They're, they're probably in the process of pushing patches out now. So this is the reason that both of us feel that Venom has been overhyped. It's good that the word got out so that the vendors that this does affect, about half of the VM vendors, can fix it. It's not a big deal, but that'll prevent anybody from ever being hurt by it. As far as we know, nobody ever has been. But, uh, but I see this. This was a huge tech press fail. I mean, you don't normally see this. If anything, they underreact. It's like they underreacted to Heartbleed. But this was this is doom and gloom. And it you know it only works with with some vendors of VM. And even if you do manage to to do the exploit, you could only break out of the VM. You would probably crash other VMs, and you still had a layer of abstraction separating you from the bare metal. So it would be very difficult to, in, in order to actually turn this into an exploit. And I was impressed by the CrowdStrike guys that, that, that mm. were the original discoverers of this. They did not overhype it. Right. From what I could see, the press took it as like an opportunity to to create inflammatory headlines and and just use it as clickbait. And so that's basically what we've seen. We have, you know, the press trying to generate some panic where even the people who found it didn't overhype it.